Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm David, I'm Head of Standards here at ATPCO. I have just shy of 30 years uh, experience in our airline industry, and that's across airline revenue accounting, airline ticketing, pricing, taxation, distribution. And for the last three years, I've been looking after ATPCO standards, councils, and intake. Here at ATPCO, we've always deeply felt and advocated the importance of industry collaboration. But what's it really mean in practice? That's why we're here today. Our councils, which evolved from the ATPCO Advisory Council, the AAC, are groups of industry representatives that are tasked with helping prioritize what ATPCO should be working on. It's only through engaged industry input that we can make sure we're focusing on the right solutions to best support our industry and to make sure those solutions get adopted by the whole industry. It's a big deal. I'd like to frame the conversation with a question I've been asked a few times over the years about industry standards that I believe we're proving to answer with a big yes with our actions. Can council standards and a transparent intake coexist with agile and innovative solutions in our industry? I'd argue, in fact, that the only way to achieve impactful industry solutions to innovate at scale is through exactly these three things, collaborative councils, fast and accurate standards, and trans transparent intake. But the word I want to focus on for a moment is scale. Solutions and industry infrastructure meant for scale aren't gonna do a lot of good for anyone if few airlines and channels adopt them. When we're dealing with 400 airlines, over 100,000 channels and their technology providers worldwide. It's only by focusing on actions that drive speed, accuracy and adoption that we can achieve innovation at scale, simply articulated as industry impact. So, our councils were created to improve time to market of new automation, that's speed, to improve accuracy that reduces the cost of friction, and to deliver value to our industry through improved industry adoption. All in all, these three, three things coexist to make up industry impact. And how's it going, you might ask? Well, here are the councils that we have running right now, focusing on offer content, distribution and infrastructure, customer care, settlement and market tools. This is the overview. I won't go into all the details here, but definitely check them out in the linked resources. These councils have their own defined and separate purposes, but at the end of the day, they provide a fundamental travel ribbon link, a consistent articulation of the product to the consumer, regardless of touch point, to answer those same questions we were using to describe airline product attributes 50 years ago. Handled by our offer content council, what is the product or offer, also called consumer visualization or presentation? How much does it cost? Who can buy it? When can they buy it or use it? And how can they use it? Handled by our distribution and infrastructure council, where can they buy it? And handled by our customer care council, what's next in times of change? Not shown here, but our settlement council covers payables and receivables so everyone gets the right money owed for providing the offer and fulfilling the order in the fastest and the least costly amount of time, and market tools that handles ATPCO products that bring those standards to life. As you all heard from the Get to Know ATPCO session, these are all the questions that go into retailing. Airlines innovating with creation and delivery of their products, channels innovating with marketing and selling them. Starting to put the pieces together, it's all connected. And we can match these questions back to all the attributes airlines file that make up an offer. If you're following the progress of the Next Generation Storefront program, you'll recognize that the what, the visualization or presentation to the consumer, is covered in the first 16 NGS attributes, also described in Appendix W, ATPCO's latest reference guide for attribute iconography, and that's available to all of you through my ATPCO. So let's set some context. Airline product attributes are the characteristics that uniquely define and differentiate each individual airline service or product and influence consumer buying decisions. As you can see, I love attributes and talking about them. We've already had some great data points framing these attributes from the councils running so far that have pointed us to set up design teams to focus on dynamic offers, storefront, adoption of existing infrastructure, 100% automation of change, taxes, consumer servicing as a product, and enabling new distribution capability. But today we're here to chat with industry leaders in these councils and in line with our aim for inclusive industry feedback, we'll want to hear from everyone in the audience as well. So please look out for that poll button uh, that you can see to the right of your screen. We will be asking you later on uh, for your views on council priorities. Now to the most important part here for today, to our guests of honor, their roles in our new targeted councils and how they're helping to move the needle with solutions for these attributes and themes that scale and lead to industry impact. 
So let's get to it. I'll ask each of our council members to briefly introduce themselves, their company, and the council or councils they play, play a role in. And I'll start with Keith. Over to you, Keith. Hey, David. Thanks for the kind words of uh, welcome and introduction. So good morning, everyone. As David mentioned, my name's Keith Wallace, and uh, I've been around the industry for 25 plus years, if you can believe it. I've, I've held a few different positions at AC, first in the uh, operations branch and, and now in the commercial branch. You know, David, it's really ironic that you chose that avatar for me in a in a past very brief life at Air Canada. I was a Six Sigma black belt, it's by no means a martial arts expert, but uh, something of a, of a Six Sigma black belt kind of guy. So I am uh, currently the senior director of distribution and payments where I'm responsible for the overall performance of those two portfolios at Air Canada. Specifically on the distribution side of my job, I'm responsible for the display and the sale of Air Canada's offers through all channels that are not kind of 100% owned and under Air Canada control. So that would include um, you know, distribution of our offers through our GDS networks to our travel agency partners, uh, that would include our NBC channel, which we're investing heavily in, and our MetaSearch partners. And for ATPCO, I've been involved uh, with ATPCO quite actively since I think maybe one of the early or even maybe the founding uh, meeting of the AAC. And now I'm a part of the brand new and extremely exciting Offer Content Council. And we're tackling things, really important topics like next generation storefront and attributes and dynamic offers. So if anyone out there is interested in, in attributes and offers and how your product is sold in the ecosystem, I really encourage you to sign up and join us. Thanks, David, back to you. Wonderful, thanks, Keith. Great reference to the AAC in 2013, those roots are in, so very strong industry roots. Great to have you with us today. Uh, over to you, Hervé. Uh, okay, so I'm not, I'm not mute anymore. So hello everyone and good morning, good afternoon. So I'm uh, Hervé Prezé from uh, Amadeus. So I'm working a bit more uh, for a long time, in fact, for more 30 years. And in fact, since the beginning with ATPCO. So I was uh, really, uh, I hope, an active member of the initial working group. So we designed the ATPCO encoded rules at, the, at that time with Tom. And I remember the, a lot the Fargo examples. Uh, so, <laughs> I had to say Fargo in this, uh, it was my, my, my objective. Um, so uh, I designed the uh, infrastructure in Amadeus to, for the, what we call the, the fair code before, before that. So designed the system to cope with the ATPCO and, and follow the ATPCO since uh, uh, then. Um, we, uh, we are currently moving to different worlds. So I'm involved in industry and expertise now. I'm leading the industry and expertise uh, uh, group in Amadeus which is a transversal unit. So I'm uh, doing the forecast of the future of standards, uh, mainly on ATPCO and IATA side, and uh, uh, anticipation of this with the management in Amadeus to, to see what are the new trends and where we need uh, maybe to invest. So a lot of things in ATPCO and of course, a lot of things with IATA and NDC in particular. So I am very, very happy to be in fact, an honor to have been selected as a council uh, sponsor for business sponsor for uh, sponsor for uh, customer care, because in particular these days we have noticed that customer care is really critical, and um, this is something that will not wait for any kind of new transformation in the future. We need to take care of the passenger now with the current technology, and we need to anticipate to continue to take care of them. Uh, next with new technologies, but this is not something we can uh, phase. We need to take care of them now. So um, I hope that uh, in the group we are uh, progressing and we will have maybe a few words uh, later on. So thanks a lot, uh, David, for this opportunity. Thanks, Hervé. Great words there. And we'll hear a little bit more about the Customer Care Council. I know you just made a certain Chief Strategy Officer very uh, happy with the mention of Fargo as well and uh, the airport there. So thanks for that. Uh, over to you, Stefania, to introduce yourself. 
Uh, um, hi everyone, thank you, David. Uh, so my name is Stefani Lichez, so I'm um, working at British Airways. I've been in the airline industry for about 20 years, I want to say. Um, the past 16 in BA, I moved from operations to uh, the reason for uh, in uh, commercial uh, department. So specifically, I lead a team whose responsibilities varies from um, distribution availability, schedule reservations, ticketing, and uh, so we do get a lot of collaborations with uh, different areas in British Airways as well as external customers. Uh, from an ATV perspective, obviously, I've been working with you guys and participating in recent working groups uh, for the past few years now. So I'm really grateful that you guys give me the opportunity to, um, you know, lead the, uh, the council as a business sponsor for their market tools. Um, so we'll probably touch upon a bit later on that. Uh, but yeah, so in terms of, uh, you know, um, what we're going to be do, talking today, I think it's going to be quite interesting. So hopefully everyone will be following on. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. And welcome to you, Stefania from British Airways. And uh, over to you, Cesar. Hi, David. Thank you for, for the invitation uh, uh, to, to, to this panel. So good morning, everyone. My name is Cesar Mateus. Uh, I represent Delta Airlines and I have a role that has a, a very interesting combination. Um, half of my role is leading the global pricing distribution team. So it's as close as you can be to, uh, to ATP Co standards and to the ATP Co work. The other half of my team um, is in charge of uh, selecting and executing uh, commercial technology projects for Delta. So that, uh, that, that role gives me a unique perspective on the high impact that ATP Co can have and all the innovation we want to do for our commercial organization and for our customers. So as part of that, I participate on the Offer Content Council, as well as the distribution and infrastructure. And I'm very excited to be part of this conversation. And thank you, David. Back to you. Excellent. So, uh, thanks, Cesar. And uh, multi-council representation there. Very good to have you with us. And uh, lastly, to Pam. OK, so my mic's on. Um, so hello, I am Pam Burns Thomas. I'm with Travelport. I have um, over 40 years in the industry, having worked for um, an airline and then into the GDS or travel platform business. And I've worked with um, airlines and with OTAs um, in my role, and I'm now in the product management area, back into some of the fares and pricing with ATPCO, also working with airline uh, revenue management systems, because one of the things that is so important to us is to get the end-to-end -end workflow down where we understand what is it that the airline wants what is going to be the impact of the agency when we think of the airlines we also have to think if we're sending this message to one carrier are they cascading it to another carrier is it going to work is everybody thinking it all the way through so with that in mind um, i am thrilled that atp co has moved to the council concept I'm also thrilled that ATP Co is working so closely with IATA now and collaborating um, to make sure that people are thinking end to end, to make sure that people at ATP Co understand what is coming out of IATA, what the intents are. Um, I'm sitting on two of the councils, two of the new councils. One is the offer content and the other is um, settlement. And I think once we get market tools going, I'll be sitting on that one as well. And then I have, um, I could say a very close colleague, actually my boss is sitting on customer care and infrastructure. So we're trying to make sure we have a handle on everything going on end to end. Yeah. Great, thanks Pam, really good to have you with us. And I think actually two, two points well worth making there, industry organizations working closely together, such an important piece. And I think that leads to a, a, a really noteworthy point you made, which is ATP Co has referred to as the life cycle of the fair before we kind of now think of it more as um, every customer touch point along the travel ribbon, consistency of policy information, regardless, regardless of the airline process or the consumer touch point, but that, that data and those standards are being used. So uh, really good point. Great to have you with us for that. And we'll, we'll certainly uh, discuss that in a bit more detail, Pam. Thank you. So uh, wonderful to have all of you with us. Uh, such a wealth of expertise and such enthusiasm as well, which is, is great for this panel. Uh, just to level set, um, I'll come to each of you with a specific question about your council uh, or your experience with councils. 
But of course, if anyone would like to add a brief point, uh, please do so, so we can make the best of this important discussion in front of the industry here at uh, Elevate today. So I'll start with, uh, with Keith. Uh, in your position in distribution at Air Canada that you've described, um, you also said, you know, you've been an innovator in the industry for, for many years now and an active council member, an advocate for industry solutions. Um, I want to talk first about a really popular to topic, if it's not universally understood. I think if you asked four different people their definition of dynamic offers, they'd have four equally valid answers. So from a standards perspective, of course, we need to make sure we're articulating the basics, providing the foundation so airlines can price in as dynamic a way as they need to optimize their business get a consistent product to the consumer at any stage in the travel ribbon. Um, can you just talk to me a little bit about how your council can help move the needle for dynamic offers and move us towards that all important scale? Hey. Yeah, sure, definitely, David. Thanks for that. You're, you know what, you're so right. Dynamic offers is one of those industry topics that is on everyone's radar, near the top of everyone's list and it probably means something a little or, or a lot different to everyone. Um, I would say that some of us have a really well-defined idea of exactly what dynamic offers means to our airline. And then there are some of us who know it's going to be a critical piece of the future strategy, but not quite sure yet exactly how we're going to implement it and use it. So I want to say all of that is totally okay. Dynamic offers is going to be something a little different for each of us. Um, a dynamic offer strategy is going to flex and breathe with an airline's overall product strategy, and it's going to be supported by an airline's distribution strategy and capabilities. So I guess the question really is, if dynamic offers will mean something a little different for each airline, how can the offer content council that's focused on standards be of any help? How can we have standards when something's gonna be very different for everyone? Well, you know, every single dynamic offer program has really kind of maybe two main elements at its core, the, the price and the product. And price can range from, in a dynamic offer strategy, price can range from, you know, predefined price points like we have today with some form of maybe dynamic availability control right through to you know real dynamic price adjustments and full dynamic kind of price calculation and then on the product side you can have really static core components of flights and ancillaries where we're all kind of starting and you can go through maybe static bundles to real dynamic content that is assembled at the time the customer makes the request. So, you know, some airlines are going to focus more on price and others more on product, but if you have a really strong foundation of some core principles, some core technologies, and the data you're going to need to enable almost any dynamic offer recipe an airline is looking to put together, you can be successful. So, I guess what I'm trying to say, David, is that the council can help set some basic fundamentals that can help us as an industry accelerate through those painful early stages of any innovation curve. You know, those frustrating months or, or years where it seems like you're almost in quicksand and you can't make any progress because everything is new and you're literally breaking new ground on 15 different fronts all at the same time. So we can help make that better, hopefully. If we can set some standards for the key ingredients like data inputs, the context of the request, the rules and the science around managing content, and if we can make that operable across all channels, I think the council can really do some of the early heavy lifting and give dynamic offers a real start for airlines so we can get a really fun, innovative process that we're all looking to get to. Great stuff. Thank you, Keith. So I, I hear there, so the, the kind of words I'm hearing, you know, it's, it's focused on price and product, but actually interoperable content that works across all channels. I love that point because you know, obviously the councils are, are 
a fairly limited number of companies, but sort of guiding the industry and standards along. But actually what it means to this audience here at Elevate is that standards are meant to work for everybody. So actually that interoperability and what it means to every airline is, is so important. Um, thanks, thanks so much for that point, Keith. That's a, that's a great one. We'll look forward to, uh, to progress on dynamic offers and hearing more about that as, as we go. Um, so I'm going to turn to Cesar uh, for a second here. Um, so as an active council member for the last three years and a member of our distribution and infrastructure council, I know you mentioned you're on uh, Keith's offer content as well. Um, I just want to get your pers perspective specifically on innovation in airline product distribution and how industry solutions can help to move the needle there. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for the question, David. Um, I think we, most of the people who are in this forum would agree that when we think distribution over the last 10 or five years, the conversation has been dominated by the adoption and evolution of the NDC standards. And that has happened um, over and over again. And of course, every market is different Every airline is different, but uh, it's interesting to see the wide variation that we see on approaches. Um, as an example, we have seen airlines that they are they did a very heavy investment on NDC, but they didn't innovate on product. Uh, and then we saw other airlines that wanted to innovate on product, but only if they are fully on NDC. So it, it is a bit of a extreme to extreme. Um, approaches and of course there are some other airlines that, that that took some other some other uh, some other policies some other ways to do business and and they drove a lot of value. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I see these councils as a very unique opportunity to do what Keith mentioned, which is build the foundation right, so we can all stand on that foundation and drive value to the customer, put the customer at the center of what we do by mixing the new developments with some of the excellent foundations that we have built over the last few years. Um, one of our favorite examples, um, at least when we talk to the team here, is that fares are kind of this unique data element that is all the way from when we make an offer to when we settle a ticket. And what are the, what, what are those benefits that fares have can we brought forward to the NDC world so we can innovate gradually uh, as we continue using and evolving some of the things we do today. So I, I, I'm very excited by having that, David, very excited by by having the time, the dedication, the expertise and the depth to be able to engage on those uh, more nuanced conversations. Great stuff, thank you, Cesar. So I hear you advocating for the use of, uh, of industry infrastructure and you gave the example of uh, affairs there. And obviously, and I think it ties to Pam's point as well, of, of things that work today within industry in infrastructure to get us all the way through the uh, the end to end travel ribbon, and also I loved your point about you know you, th there still needs to be a focus on that product innovation side as well as the pipes that make that work as well. So a great point there. So um, as a follow up as well to that, um, I know you're a newer member of ACP Co Councils. Um, I know some on in this panel have been around the AAC since 2013. I know for you the last three years. Um, so what, what do you think we can all learn as an Elevate audience from this transition to those targeted councils? And what sort of behavior should we encourage there? Yeah, and so David, I think from, from our perspective, uh, three points. One is remember that targeted councils can go deeper and, and can have more engaging conversations and can do more informed trade-offs. So invitation to the group to, to engage and to engage uh, leaning hard, if you will, so we can have those, those good trade-offs that translate into implementation at the scale, um, because it, the AAC candidly was was a bit broad, uh, and it was hard to have people representing airlines that had expertise on all those different topics. Um, the second thing is, uh, we need stronger and more transparent governance. I mean, uh, we we have seen some opportunities just to have clarity around what the process is to put things through and to get them approved. Um, and I know that the councils and, and your team, David, have done a, a very good job at starting to bubble that information up and, and making it more clear. Uh, so great progress on that. Um, but as we do that, the council will have more and more impact. Um, and the third thing is we, we would love to have more space to debate priorities. Of course, the councils that are the new councils are a better space. Um, look forward to seeing all of you in person in design groups, in councils, 
so we can have those conversations. I think we as airlines would like to say to our customers, hey, go travel, go see your customers because that engagement is better. Well, we see it here clearly. I, I look forward, I can't wait to be in person. I can't wait to have those dialogues and, and have good decisions, have good conversations. Excellent. Love the enthusiasm there, Cesar. Thank you. And th thanks for being such an active member, of course, of the, the council as well. Um, and I'm hearing there, you know, engagement with the right people is, is important. Focus on the end to end, again, the entire travel ribbon. Um, but I do, I think it's good for those learning points you mentioned there as well, that we still need to keep working on governance, prioritization, making sure that we prioritize the urgent versus the, the, the important things. And, we, and we, we keep leading, acting, listening, learning and pivoting but we take a truly agile approach to this to make sure we really are fit for purpose with these councils. And I think all the points you made there are so actionable. We always look for that feedback because we can we can learn, we can make better. And I think it puts us in a strong position for 2022 as well. So thank you. Uh, thanks so much for that, Cesar. And now to Hervé, as our business sponsor for customer care, um, you've, as you mentioned, you've had a long relationship with AT Pico pricing and retailing automation standards. Um, I know you're a strong advocate for industry infrastructure for 100% automation. And of course, in the wake of 2020, a pandemic in which absolutely everything changed for all of us. Um, can you just talk to me about your perspective on customer care and why it's particularly important at this time? Yes, and, and first I would like to come uh, to add some comments on uh, what has been said, because I think it's very important to understand also the standard itself, the importance of standard is everything we said, plus one thing is we always say that we want customers to select products uh, on um, based on attributes and not only based on price. So whatever we do, uh, even in NDC or, or fair management system, we still need standardization. Otherwise, you will have this problem of not being able to compare to a lower comparison of product uh, for something else than price, because price is just a number, it's easy. But when you go beyond price, you need standards, uh, whatever is a data source. and. Um, so this transformation, uh, whatever is a transformation, will require uh, consensus, will require organizations such as ATPCO. So we are agree that, okay, this is the size of the tracks. You can put your trains, but you need to have the same size of the tracks. So I think that this is important. Coming back, uh, also I would like to say that about the councils uh, themselves. So I'm, I'm around for 30 years, I saw the different uh, different ways of managing the priorities and different ways to govern, uh, many of them, in fact. <laughs> and now I'm convinced that this new council framework is really a great way to engage uh, on ambitious objectives. And uh, more important to focus the working groups where we have the subject matter expert to really work on what uh, really matters and uh, what can scale, which is also uh, important to secure that what we do is for the benefit of the whole because we are an industry uh, organization. So to come back on your question, uh, yes, we have learned a lot with the pandemic uh, period. So mainly three points. Uh, the first one is uh, customer care is essential. So the disruptions, the problem is a very good opportunity to rebuild the industry and to do it in a better way. We see a lot of things that can be improved in a good way. When travelers are feeling supported, when they, they have in front of them people informed and when they, there is some proactive uh, actions, they are much more inclined to travel again and being loyal to their agent, but also to their airlines. So this is a key, uh, a key asset that maybe we underestimated before the crisis. The second point is automation, of course. Automation is a must. Uh, the pandemic, we know, uh, not only in airline industry, has accelerated the need for uh, digital tools, uh, more actions are done online, and we have seen how challenging it is also to handle millions of tickets. To, to say a word on just what we saw in Amadeus, we saw more than 2 million ticket cancellation per day at a given point uh, last year. So you can imagine that done uh, manually. So our industry cannot afford to lag behind of automation. Uh, we need to enable digital actions and we need to do that in all circumstances, even on the unexpected. And this is exactly what we are aiming uh, in, the, in our council. And we have defined a clear objective, 100% automation of changes. 
So the last point, the third point is transparency and collaboration is essential. So when such an external event is hurting the industry, we need to act together. And I think we should have done it beef, uh, a bit better uh, last year. We must provide transparent conditions to the traveler. We need to, to prepare the rules and processes to cope with unexpected changes. It was unexpected, but by any, any way, what we have done concrete, concretely in, uh, last year was things that we could have prepared in advance. So for next time, we need to be more resilient. So investing in resilience is uh, critical. Also, the, the last point on this is uh, travel agents. Travel agents are absolutely essential to cope with volume of changes, in particular in these difficult times, and to restore trust in travel. They are in contact with travelers, they have the confidence. So th whatever we do in the council, the solution needs to be multi-channel and equip all sellers with the same information and the same tool. I think it's essential, it's one of the lessons uh, learned from last year. Great stuff. Thanks, Herbert. So really good stuff there and, and some very hard metrics as well that, that you provided on you know, increased focus on customer care when change becomes the norm for all air travelers. And the challenge that brings to, to service customers en masse when automation isn't 100 percent. And frankly, you know, it's it's we're an ecosystem. It's all of us working together. It's the reason why these standards are so important to bring you know, airlines and sellers their innovation, but also their, their ability to automate together. Um, so, um, just, just briefly, if I can ask you, what have you seen so far as these councils and design teams move forward uh, that gives you the most hope for speed, accuracy, and adoption at scale or per industry impact? Yeah, the, the first thing we did was to define a measurable target. I think it's essential because it, we, uh, if we have a measurable target, we can decide the priorities just related to the KPI we have defined. So I think it's essential for a council to define a measurable target because it removes all, it removes all of the politics around uh, the decisions. It is just a fact. So with 100% automation objective, the council has provided a clear guideline, but also a way to measure success. Today, I can tell you where we are starting, we have 20% of reform and 60% of changes that are automated. So the method is very simple. Huh? Uh, the design team is aiming at increasing these figures. We measure, we can measure the success. To achieve this, the team is active on three uh, axes. The first one is, and the key one is, why some, airline are, uh, some airlines are not filing changes and reform conditions? What are the blockers? This is probably where we are going to, to gain a lot in the KPI. Second point is, we know that industry is lacking a central source of data for refundability of taxes. So we are going to the together to define and fill in uh, this industry reference. And the third point is all of the rest. We need to identify, prioritize any other items uh, related to customer care, change in refund, but then we select and prioritize the ones that have the most impact on the end result, which is increasing automation level percentage. As easy as, uh, like that, I think uh, it's quite easy. <laughs> Thank you, David. Perfect. Thanks, Ove. And I think a really quite a shocking stat there, really, that that you know it, that um, forty percent of changes still manual today, and uh, eighty percent of refunds. So that's a, really a, a tangible target for that that group to work with. And I think another point that, that we must provide quantifiable value. These councils and design teams aren't there for the sake of it, or to talk about these issues. They are focused on actions, metrics, quantifiable results. So, um, Stefano, coming to you as the business sponsor of our Market Tools Council, which obviously hasn't, it, it's slated for 2022, but it'll look after user groups for ATP Go products that bring these standards to life. Can you talk a bit about, uh, but from your experience, on what excites you about these targeted councils, your experience working in industry forums, and what we can focus on to make the most of yours and the other members' time? Uh, thank you, David. So I think uh, the very first thing that you asked is about what excites me. So something that Cesar touched upon already, AAC was quite big in scope. And I think a lot, a lot of the times we didn't necessarily have people being able to uh, actively participate, either because they were not necessarily with the right experience or they didn't necessarily have the you know, the, the, the way to put any, the input to, um, you know, help with the decision making process. So I think the new structure is actually going to enable the councils and the participants in the councils uh, to be more focused on setting the directions and take a more strategic approach. 
and then we can deliver through the a proper and clear prioritization process with the help of the science team where that subject matter experts can then actually have a real focus on the actual solution, uh, the, on the, the solution design and the delivery for, for an industry adoption. Because most of the times we otherwise run into the risk of working on something that wasn't either completed to delivery because the industry moved on or there was not a real appetite at, at a specific point in time. Personally, I'm excited to have been given the opportunity to be sponsored by Council because I think the market tools will actually can help make a difference with shaping solutions that can support the implementation of standards as well as improving workflow efficiencies. In terms of my past experience in industry forums, uh, obviously I don't have the uh, same experience as all the other people in this panel because <laughs> I haven't been in the industry for that long. But I think one of the things that I notice um, since I've been able to attend these forums um, is being that um, whereas we've all been very keen to kind of share and you know in a very neutral way uh, about our knowledge and experience sometimes it's not actually been easy to be actively engaged and this could be a variety of factors such as you know the discussions could have been too detailed for the for the agenda or there was not the right area of expertise or we're simply sometimes we're not necessarily comfortable in speaking up uh, the new structure of it however, can help you in having a more engaged audience because the participants can actually now clearly see where they can, uh, you know, actively engage uh, as a group and give and actually add value to what we're trying to deliver. Whereas before, it might not necessarily be clear that we would just participate to represent uh, our airline or system provider. So the sessions, I believe, from now on should actually become more engaging and everyone, hopefully, everyone will be comfortable enough to open up to the group and we can create a learning environment while at the same time we can help to move the industry forward. And finally, uh, to the question he asked, what you can do to, you know, help us, um, both ourselves as team members of the council, I think probably going to touch upon a couple of things. One is agility. Uh, because I think we all agree, especially with the past year, that we need to be able to achieve a quicker implementation to market. Uh, if anything, last year has taught us from, a, you know, with the introduction of the emergency flexibility rules, I think that having the right focus and agile approach and the collaboration, we have been able to actually achieve something in a relatively short period of time. And everyone from airline to customer has, have actually been able to benefit from that. So I think... Ideally, we would want to kind of make sure that we still keep this in mind and we use the same approach while we come through, you know, the other side of this recovery phase. And then the other key point for me is um, make sure that we continually, especially with the TPP as well, we continue to act actively engage with non ATD or industry activities because we need to make sure that there is alignment between what the councils are going to commit in terms of priorities and deliverables and what the wider industry needs and developments are. We do want to avoid the risk of delivering something which is not going to end up being adopted or we actually work in silos and we end up duplicating the work. Uh, so to me, this would be the two things that would actually help us um, to make an efficient use and be effective in what we're going to deliver through the councils. Great. So Thanks thank so much, Stefania. I think a couple of great points there that, that, that I certainly took away were, again, the right people being involved, doing the right things. So we focus on prioritization. And this very important thing about knowledge transfer and making sure we keep that knowledge in the industry. So these are a great opportunity for, uh, for, for growing knowledge, raising all boats in terms of understanding of, um, of, of the entire travel ribbon. So you mentioned, as Pam had earlier, um, industry organizations working together. So love those points. Thank you. I'm going to move on to Pam. Um, you're a member of two councils, um, as you mentioned, and uh, of course, your company's represented across all of them. Um, I'm really pleased you're on this panel because I know we've talked at length before about mm -hmm. industry affairs, making sure solutions work end to end. Um, and you've seen that transition from longer meetings every six months to more dynamic councils that run 90 minutes every two to three months now and are more targeted. Um, so. Um, as, as a last question from from uh, from this group, can you give us your perspective on what we're looking to achieve here, the level of collaboration across the supply chain, and what gives you personally the most hope for industry impact as we move on into 2022? So, as I said earlier, I think I think there was a really good start when ATPCO started to work more closely directly with IATA. Um, I I think the councils themselves. Um, as other people have said today, it, it's going to allow more people to participate. Um, 
across a wider breadth of, of disciplines. Um, the, the really important thing, though, is that we do get the right people to participate, like Stefania was saying. Um, when the people participate in the councils, they do need to participate, not just come and sit, right? And I think that by allowing the councils to focus on areas of people's expertise, we may get more of that. Um, we're certainly going to have to encourage it, right? The other, the other thing is with the councils, we need to be sure we don't get siloed in the councils because there's going to be overlap between every council. And so we need to make sure that whatever we're working on in one council where there's impact on other areas of our businesses, that those have to be represented and that may have to be represented through the council, or it may be that people within their own organization have to reach out to other groups and bring back, back information, right? Um, a, very, a very common example is if people who are experts in fares and pricing want to pull a piece of information from an airline schedules um, data, they need to make sure they grab the right piece of data. When they come in and they say, I want to use a DEI from schedules, was it actually the right one? Did your fares and pricing people go back and vet that with the schedules experts, right? So we need to make sure that happens. Um, Great stuff. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pam. I think that was a, a really nice focus to, to wrap up those questions as well, that we're, yeah. we're again, focusing on people, motivated people, engaged people, the right people. But also, I, I love that as kind of a closing message from, from this panel as well, that um, the, these are focused councils, but actually they tie together because really they're focusing on the, the, the end vision, which is a consistent product to the consumer at every touch point. And it's allowing airlines to, to innovate in product and channels to innovate in selling marketing that product as well. And we must make sure that we're, we're uh, interoperable. So I'd like to thank you all very much, um, just in the interest of time, I'll thank our panel for your continued engagement, your wisdom um, and your guidance on this journey and this, this path that we're taking. And I really look forward to working with you all as we take our councils into 2022, some of them still to start up um, as a strong foundation for industry solutions. So thank, thank you all. Um, I do want to, we, we have about five minutes left. I want to turn to our audience now and again, look out for that poll tab on your screen. We talked about the, the importance of transparency, collaboration, and now it's time for you, our audience, to make your voice heard. So remember that although for now the councils are being staffed by our former ATP Co Advisory Council member organisations, opportunities will arise in the future for more participation, as well as the fact that multiple design teams that are open to everyone are currently running on the topics you've heard about today. So I'm going to open our first poll for the audience and you'll need to click the poll tab here on your screen to participate. So what you'll see in the poll is that we're taking cross council view and please click now. We'll look at some results coming in, but you'll see the top priority items from our council so far to get a broad elevate community view. I want you to pick your top two from offer content. We have dynamic offers and next generation storefront from distribution and infrastructure. We have servicing as a product simplify the supply chain and getting started with new distribution capability and NDC at scale. From customer care, 100% automation of change and refund rule for taxes. And from settlement, a single source of truth for taxes. So once again, if you could pick your top two from this poll, we, within our councils, we look at these themes that are very targeted. Uh, this is really the first time we've had, a, it's very exciting, it's the first time we've had a chance to look cross industry um, at, uh, at what that will be. So um, we're going to have a look uh, at our poll results. Um, okay, I think our poll results are in. Um, I'm going to move on to the next poll uh, so we can get your, your answer there. Again, just in interest of time. So important to scale impacts that all of you and many, many more industry stakeholders engage in councils, design teams, intake and standards. So please pick all that apply from the below. You'll see the second and final poll question of this session. I have a My ATP Co account. I use my My ATP Co account often to engage with the industry. I think of ATP Co first when I have a pricing or retailing automation business problem that could be solved at scale with a standard. I haven't done the above, but I will now or not for me, thanks. Um, and obviously, we're hoping if you haven't that uh, that you will just get in touch and get a my ATP Co account. So, okay, so we're um, we we have those data points. You'll be able to see them afterwards. Um, I'm sure in the follow-up materials. 
Um, here are some things that you, the audience, uh, can do uh, in order to get a bit more involved in what you've heard our, our council members and leaders, industry leaders talking about today. Get a My ATP Pico account, it's very easy to do. I believe in this one so fundamentally, I'd even invite you to email me. Um, I'm sure we can put that in the materials afterwards, my email, um, and I'll get your account turned around in a day. You'll find all of the council and design team information on My ATP Pico. It's a one-stop shop for what's going on with ATP Pico industry solution development, very transparent. Secondly, think of ATP Pico first for business problems that relate to pricing and retail automation. If we don't hear about them, they're not getting solved at the industry level for standards. It's one click, single paragraph, and then you can see if the industry agrees with your idea. The most resonating and impactful to solve rise to the top, and they get dealt with through these councils that you've heard about today. Third, make your voice heard, as you did with the poll today. Like and dislike business requests. It's very social media, um, so we can broadly hear what's resonating and what needs the attention of councils and design teams to, to fix. And lastly, get in touch. If you're interested in one of these areas you've heard about today, design teams are open to the ATP Co community. So we do want you to more than just stay in touch if you need to. You may participate in a design team. Just let us know. So thanks again to our panel, wise advisors, all of you. Uh, thank you very much for your time and continued engagement. Lots more time than we've spent this morning. Um, very good guidance. You're all a great pleasure to work with. And uh, we have obviously long industry relationships. I'd like to wish you all, our audience, healthy, safe, and thank you for participating in this session. Um, I hope that you know a lot more about the positive intent and action of our councils and what they're pursuing to guide us all down the path for the mutual win. If you want to talk more, again, get in touch. I'm always happy to talk airline product attributes, standards, intake and councils if you'd like to reach out to me personally. Now, it's time to stay tuned for our next session, Getting NDC to Scale. It's not really about the pipes anymore, with Corey Garner of T2RL moderating another panel of fantastic industry experts. I'm really looking forward to that one. Thank you all so much for your time and I'll see you soon. Thank you.